Hi folks, this is Jin and welcome on my very first. I wanted to record a video, but I thought maybe it's worth it right to start a streaming session and see how, how good it goes. My plan is to show you how how I modified my smart home. There were some development uh, development since uh, a year ago or so. I ran, I ran it on um, on an Orange Pi PC, right? So a small box, right? So I had I had this um, Orange Pi for maybe thirty euro all in you know. Actually, it was working quite nicely, but it tended to hang up periodically and especially when I needed it uh, on cold mornings to turn on you know the, the outside power power sockets for the cards it was hanging and missed to switch on the socket so that was really disappointing if you like go out and and the cards are cold I was thinking like okay maybe the hardware is just too too weak so I upgraded it to an old notebook with 16 gig of RAM and i7 CPU so it was quite por powerful but old Later on I figured out what was the reason for, for those hangups, it was not the, the hardware, but there was still an improvement. So let, let me show you, let me show you. So these are the specs for the Orange PI PC, uh, which was like a, quite a capable thing with one gigabyte of RAM. Okay, but so now we are, we are running with 16 gig, but, um, what I did is actually I installed um, a K3S cluster, not K3S cluster, but installed Kubernetes actually, which is capable to run on a single node. Since I work myself a lot with Kubernetes, why not run it at home? And installed Rancher on top of it. So you can see here, I have a local cluster right now, a bit tight on memory it says, but it, it is a single node and in that node I have like stateful sets because I prefer the, the those are single uh, pod instances home assistant and ESP home um, so I, by running it with a cryptical pod name so I prefer to use like uh, fixed pod names so the idea was to run not in, in, in docker compose or supervise d and then an extra containers home assistant stuff like that i ran it in kubernetes all in all i would have a helm templates i can apply and modify and i store them in google cloud repositories which is like uh, i'm using a private project so so my plan was to have a reproducible deployments um, which are stored in git and then you can audit changes and apply it and have a possibility also automatically deploy it to the cluster on change inside git for instance change the version right and then the version update would automatically be applied by flea to a newer version that's the idea to sum up, um, I have Home Assistant running on um, on this K3S node, and I also have a SP Home uh, running here. I have two boards, one board and one camera, so I can, you know, use those I/O boards for controlling stuff, and that that could be maybe a next review. And I have a continuous delivery of the versions of the components. And the templates are quite simple. So there are really simple uh, services with, a, with an ingress to the traffic controller on, on the K3S. And in my router, I have uh, specified uh, aliases to the same IP address of that notebook in order to resolve the different addresses and the reason for those hang-ups was actually the recorder component it was writing to SQLite and the IO operation on this little box was too heavy uh, to handle uh, parallel uh, save saves 
into the you know, like flushes to the SQL file. So uh, since I have a big machine, I run I run uh, my SQL in, um, installation directly under systemd, which is fine. And uh, this is currently my setup. So there are like two floors and some some temperature components uh, I'm watching and and, and uh, AC and outside sockets and stuff like that. Uh, but we could go in a detail maybe a bit later. So my approach today was to show you that uh, I run my um, smart home in uh, K3S uh, Kubernetes deployment. I run a continuous delivery via Fleet. Fleet is a comp this rancher component as well, uh, where you can override some Helm values if you wanted and uh, everything is automated so i just do git commits and everything else is done in the background uh, we kind of could try to upgrade it let's see if there is a newer version of home assistance so, okay there 2023.12 one and what's our current one okay we could we could make an upgrade actually And we'll commit it, and we could see what what happens. So I pushed the the, the, the last version right now. Let me see if, if that changes here. Yeah, it has changed now. It's updated. And uh, let's see what Rancher does. Basically, is if if something is happening here. Yeah, it, it sees that Home Assistant uh, has some modifications. And it is now trying to restart the stateful set. It's not yet ready because it's being restarted. It's not yet ready. It's not passing the um, health checks. But give it some time. The idea was to run it on a bigger machine, which works. Uh, run a separate database on that machine as a cloud database would cost too much. And I'm trying to keep my cloud costs low. And um, yeah, that's something which is important. And let me show you this. So while it is doing, so what uh, was required, of course, uh, where I had to specify host network true. So it it uses host network in order to allow home assistants to discover, you know, the 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 nodes and hosts and integrations. So that was important. And uh, I've specified node affinity to the node because it's using like a specific TTY USB on a specific node. Yeah, after a while you see that Home Assistant has updated. And it is running the new version. And uh, just wanted to double check. Yeah, the version is the expected one. So, works as expected. Thanks for watching, and see you maybe in another stream. Goodbye.